So I'd like to nominate uh, MJ Second. Adams to be chair. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Also, <laughs> can we have a parade or something the way they used to? Maybe ticker tape or something. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, is there a motion to close nominations? Close nominations. Make the motion to close nominations. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so now, vote on chair. All those in favor, MJ. Aye. 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 That's it. That's easy. Do you also need the election of a vice chair. Vice chair. That's right. That will be a council member. I nominate Gene. I am absolutely swamped. I get this traffic, this transportation and parking at yeah. five other committees. Please. Would you like to be vice chair? Sure. Yeah, I don't know. All right. I nominate Jesse. A second. Move we close nominations. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's all we need. No, we need to vote for you now. No, we need to vote for you. Oh, yeah. But you might not win. I. I. It's like American history, right? Right. Official history. Yeah. So, Chairman Adams? Yeah, Chairman Adams. This is going to be confusing. I thought you were going to change. But you're chairing this one, right? No. Or does this become effective immediately? I think it's immediate. Yeah, okay. it's a new uh, baptism of the title. Good morning. I'd entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Um, I have to abstain. I, was not, I, I wasn't here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Shall we cover snow and ice update? We can. I went to City Council last Thursday night and gave a small presentation that was interrupted. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, uh, we nothing's changed from last Thursday night when I did the presentation. We have a total of about thirty-four thousand dollars left in the budget, about thirty-two thousand in operation and maintenance, and two thousand in personal services or so. Um, we did have some overtime associated with weekend watch, so I know that money went down uh, personal services a little bit. Well, we haven't done payroll yet, so I don't have any new numbers for you, but it is slowly depleting itself, so you're aware of that. And um, thank those are the councilors for passing uh, the requested death to spend. Any action needed? No. Mm -hmm. so can I just ask a question? With, with this winter, I know the first, you know, we had a storm early, but with this winter being so snow-free, are you projecting by the end that we're going to be way under what we usually were or not? Or? Well, right now we're ahead of the game. Uh, March is usually the snowiest month. I can't predict what's going to happen, but um, we could be in for some doozy still. You never know, but um, I'm enjoying the warm weather. Yeah, and we got 10 days <laughs> forecast that no major snow. In the exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. It's supposed to be a little something tomorrow night. But who dealt with it? We're supposed to get one to three 50, inches. Yeah, well, last night, it's too. It's supposed was, to be 50 uh, degrees on Wednesday. Yeah, I 50 yeah. degrees just on Wednesday. Leave it. Can you do that? Just, hey, it's going to be 50 degrees the next day. We just won't plow this morning. <laughs> Middle of February, I've poured concrete in a slab today. You know, so I mean, you do? I'm happy. I mean, it's going, it's going well. I've actually used half the amount of fuel in my house as I did last year. Exactly half to the date. Well, I'm just thankful for a half, you know. Mild winter. Yeah. Well, I think we're hoping for everything too. Uh, everybody's fuel consumption in this city uh, buildings is, yeah. is way down. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, as long as it stays this way, I'm happy. The one question I have, I, I was just talking with my girls today about whether or not the snowfall will impact our water supply in the, the sun, in the summer. It may. Right now, the reservoirs are full, mm -hmm. but it, it okay. could. Isn't that usually the, doesn't that water just free flow right over the dam and we lose it anyway? We do. Yeah. We do. The only one we try to capture the most out of is the West Waitley Reservoir because we can fluctuate that height and get it into the Mountain Street Reservoir. Yeah. But still, the Mountain Street Reservoir ultimately overflows. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So right now they're in great shape. Plus, we've had 60 inches of rain last year. Yeah. It's been a pretty yeah. flush year. We should start selling water at all those places. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we Yeah. On the agenda for the next meeting. All right. Shall we move on to discuss item number two, the hole in the DPW garage floor? Hmm. 
So the Board of Public Works at their last meeting passed a contract to tie and bond to evaluate the structural integrity of the floor and to look at repair options for that. So we hopefully we'll see that report in about a month or so. And so we can plan what to do for that. We did price out plate steel to get across the floor and it's going to cost about thirty-five to forty thousand dollars just for the steel uh, to get that bay open. So right now we're holding off on the report. The trucks are parked outside and um, I'd rather not spend that kind of money because I don't have that kind of money right now. It's raised a lot of questions about safety. I'm not sure how much the board and how much the counselors but you've had discussions with them otherwise? So. How do the counselors just look at the board? So there's a hole in the floor. Does everybody know what's Did happening? Did you see a picture there? of it? There was, a, yes. there, was a, there was an article in the Gazette about it. Oh, yeah. So is there a better copy of the picture? Anyway, it's, it's okay. It's, it's caused, a, you know, obviously a safety concern for the, for the workers over there. A lot of heavy equipment that we've had to take out, and it's parked. You probably saw it when you came into the meeting. Parked out front here. Um, and part of the work that Time Bond is going to be doing is looking at all the uses that we have inside the building. We have jack stands, and we've you know we've got a lot of heavy equipment in there. We're doing a lot of different things, and there's a lot of questions about safety and loading in the, in the floor. Um, one thing that the hole did reveal was that um, the thickness of the concrete over there is uh, is about three inches thick, and we've got fully loaded sanders in there and, and other things. It's it's a miracle that the floor hasn't failed before now. But it's a pretty big deal, and we're hoping to get some, some feedback from time on about how to mitigate um, the problem because it's you know it's a mm -hmm. big safe, it's a safety problem. There is also a concern of um, raised also with the amount of mold found on one side of the building and what that might be. So part of their study, they're going to take some samples and do some uh, study on that, and see whether or not it poses any hazard to our our workers. <coughs> Um, well, we've known that the, that the floor has been hollow forever. There's, there's, a, there's a series of square holes all the way down that bridge, and it's always, you can put a stick down, it's always four feet. There's a, it was a grease pit or something underneath that floor. Um, it varied throughout, but yeah, you're right. In that <coughs> particular area, it's all hollow runs all the way up through about yeah. maybe five and a half feet. There's a, a wall built that yeah. these structural slabs report on. Yeah. It's actually, it's like a hundred things. If you take a rod, you bang it, you can, you can hear when it gets to the, the next wall. It's about 130 feet long, I think. Is that right? I forget. Something like that. And it's a four, and it are four and a half feet wide and four feet deep are these holes. That's about right. And we had that a hole before. Last year. Under where the lift is. No, actually, um, where the lift was the next bay over was a had a staircase down into it, and it was what some of the service vehicles in. Yeah. When it was the bus company here. Yeah. So it was a service pit, like you'd see at Jiffy Lube, and that was filled in with sand and gravel, then blacktopped over. Yeah. Back uh, probably ten years ago or something. Yeah. And then we removed the blacktop because you couldn't put a jack on it. It was going down through the blacktop yeah, so and poured concrete. concrete. It. Yep. <clears throat> I just have a quick question. Is there a reason that we couldn't flow or fill or some such thing as that? Well, that's one of the ways. options I think Time Bond's going to be looking at, is how do we fill that void space underneath the floor so that if it does break through, it doesn't pose a hazard. <laughs> how much will it, and does Time and Bond have an estimate for this, this work? No, they just started to do the work. They've uh, had a site visit, uh, two site visits actually, one from uh, uh, their, I assume it's an environmental health person, was going to do some of the sampling, and then the structural engineer came out. Okay. So we're just, just getting started on yeah, it. Yeah, okay. I'm just curious as we are out of money. We yeah. are more than flat. I'll um, put that out there. We need a new facility here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to pay for it. <laughs> you don't care you live in West Hampton. <laughs> yeah, I think we have our own bills in West Hampton. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, okay, I just kind of thinking, I'm wondering about the, uh, the hazardous waste in the bottom of the, the pit, which is also going to be a concern. That's the site already gonna, registered gonna... with DEP, just so you're aware of that. Yep. That's a known... So we have a file number. We have a file number yep. on that, and they come out every year and inspect it. Okay. Hmm. Has it ever been tested? 
it was tested back when the AUL was done back before my time. Yeah. So at least 12 years ago that was back, like not long ago. I've actually put my tape down in there in the holes and pull up with goop. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when do we expect to have uh, test results or anything like that? Uh, we'll see something in a month or so. A month. We're pushing it as fast as we can. Okay. The other concern that comes out of it also is the fact that we installed a lift about eight years ago in one of the bays, and we didn't realize it was hollow underneath that bay, too. And so the mechanics have great concerns about working on any vehicles now when this whole loading of the truck plus the, the service um, lift itself is just um, four pedals so close in about an eight-by-eight eight area. Yeah. They're concerned about that falling through with the, while they're working on it. That, well, that's the lift that was, I was asking about. That with, uh... That's new. We have a the big lift yeah. in the mechanics bay, then we have a small truck lift uh, in the storage bay that's okay. used for servicing pickup yeah. trucks. Okay. Mike, did you have a question? Yeah, in the uh, interest of disclosure, you should understand that I spent my whole career at Time Bond and I'm still a part time employee there. Yeah. And uh, when there's an issue regarding Time Bond's contractor performance, I recuse myself from the discussion. But I'd be much be surprised if you learned that. So, I knew that. <laughs> well, I'm ruining a lot of We talked about it before. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Any more discussion on this? No. Okay. I'll move forward and talk about the progress on the state property. <clears throat> Mayor Narkowitz has approached Al Stegman at District 2, which is local mass DOT, and asked that he they wait until we have the new city solicitor on board before we further discussions with the state on acquiring the property next door. So everything's kind of at a standstill at the moment until we have a new city solicitor. And that was with Al Stegman? Yes. Okay. Do we have an ETA on when that might be decided? No. They're, I don't know. They're in court Wednesday. I'm not sure if we decided that day, but they'll be here Wednesday. And that's for the sea wall? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, committee chairperson, I think we already did that business. Yeah. Uh, flood control? Flood control? No. No? Okay. Flood control. We got two letters today from the Army Corps of Engineers, one for the Connecticut River uh, levee system and one for the Mill River system. And we have a lot of work to do in a relatively short period of time with no budget. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work that need to be done. So Jim and I have just started to digest everything, but there's an awful lot of work to be done. I think the work falls into into two categories. We received we just received these as Ned had mentioned, and we received a couple months ago uh, another set of correspondence from the from the Army Corps and uh, talking about um, maintenance activities that need to be done on the levees and flood control system and other sort of deficiencies that they see. Um, these recent reports that we we actually just got them. We got one today and one on Friday, and haven't had a chance to go through them fully. But um, the the reports themselves reference the need to fill in data gaps in regard to the flood control systems, and, and a lot of that is related to um, field work and engineering work to try to determine um, what if these flood control systems meet the current day design standards. So the things like settlement analysis, stability analysis, um, topographic studies, um, well drilling programs. So it's a big, it's a big deal. And you know, we we started to prepare an in-house cost estimate for some of the maintenance activities, establishing turf, removing trees, taking care of uh, concrete repairs, and things like that. I think, you know, we're. We don't have a full cost estimate for the whole thing, but it's hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to comply with these, and there, um, there are deadlines associated with um, compliance and the things in these recent reports that we just received. And um, you, we can lose, we can have problems with flood insurance in the city if, if we don't comply with the deadlines, and there's, there's a lot of financial ramifications for businesses and residents if, if we're not able to, um, to comply with the core requirements. So, How much time did it take? Um, January of 2014 is the deadline, so essentially two years um, to get a lot of work done. Um, the previous inspections that we received a couple of months ago from the Corps had some deadlines of September 2013 on some of the maintenance activities, 
and some of those may be substantial as well. We're putting together cost estimates on those right now, and those alone could be you know, easily in the six figures, two or three hundred thousand dollars or more. Um, so we're trying to we're trying to get a uh, a better estimate on what those costs are, and what the scope is going to be. Like um, clearly, the core is ramping up what their requirements are. Um, for municipalities in terms of what, uh, what they do for maintenance and also for trying to prove that these older uh, flood control systems meet current des current day design standards. Mm -hmm. So you could say fill in data gaps. Is that is that basically what it is or is there any actual construction activity that needs to... Well, we, we don't know. The construction activity is right now it's related to things like the fact that we have old, we have old outdated pumps and equipment, we have, you know, we may have some concrete walls that need work, we may have, um, you know, clearing and establishing turf on, on the levees that need work. So the, there are those sorts of activities, and then the data gaps that they, they call, it's their term, they call it data gaps, and it's related to things like updating hydraulic analysis to make sure that the levee height, elevation of the levee is appropriate. Um, looking at um, the way that the levees were constructed in the 40s to make sure that they pass today's standards for seepage analysis and stability analysis. So um, there's just a lot of other uh, engineering analysis and things that they want done. So a lot of it's engineering, some of it's construction. It's also possible that once the engineering work is done, they, they may find that there are stability problems with the way that the levees were built back in the 40s and that additional work would be necessary construction work would be necessary to bring the levees up to today's standards. It's not uncommon for that to happen. A lot of the uh, geotechnical type of calculations that are done nowadays didn't exist and weren't that sophisticated back when these flood control systems were built. So it's like the dams. The board's familiar with the dams as is the council. And a lot of things were built at the turn of the century just based on people's experience and what they thought would be good. And you know, since that time we've had you know decades and decades of engineering research and and uh, calculations and things that are done now to show that something is going to be stable. So that's what we're going to be looking at with these levees as well, is trying to to, uh, to better understand them and study them and determine whether they meet today's standards. And if they don't, there could be even more work necessary on top of that. And this would fall under our, uh, under the realm of unfunded mandates? I mean, they're going to tell we have to do this. Well, the way I read my first read of this is basically they have a program that if you do not have an active, active facility, what they consider to be active, there is a, uh, there's a program that where they allow for some form of reimbursements in case um, there's damages are caused, post-flood post uh, uh, damages are happening, that they would have a program to help us pay for those damages as long as it's an active site. And that's what our concern is, is getting listed as inactive and then there's no federal assistance whatsoever. Right, so you lose the ability to get grant money. If you, if you don't do this work and there's a flood and there's damage, then you're not eligible for grant money for, uh, for, uh, for mitigation, <coughs> for flood mitigation. So if you, don't, and if you don't do this work, the other thing is you, you're saying you're in jeopardy, people could lose flood insurance. Right. Explain the active and inactive. Um, to be an active site, I mean, you, you have to have work underway? No, it means you have to have an acceptable levy s system in place. In other words, it's been, it's past muster. Yeah. It's got a, a standard that's <coughs> been met. Right now, both our facilities are an overall rating of minimally acceptable. So we're just well, over that threshold right now. Okay. And there, is there like a time where it will be absolutely unacceptable or? will be unacceptable if we don't meet the dates in those reports. Right. right. I think it's, so this, I think uh, that's study. what the was. And so the stormwater uh, uh, plan that we have, is that anything to do with this at all? That's part of it. It is it's, part of it's it. It's looking at not just our levee system, the flow control system, but drainage systems citywide and what needs to get done. And, and for that, those are pretty high estimates of what needs to be done over quite a period of time, right? How how were those going to get paid for? Was there going to be a bond issue on that? Was raised rates? How, what were the thoughts on that? Can this be joined with that in some way? Uh, they, they go hand in hand with each other. But in terms of paying for this? 
and there's there's different ways it can be looked at. Uh, the general bond floated to do the work. Um, does the city look at it as a stormwater utility like an enterprise fund, like we do for sewer and water? Those are really the two models, I think, that are available, either general fund expenditures to take care of it, or some type of enterprise fund with money that would be nice to take care of it. That was my next question, with the stormwater enterprise fund. How much have we done on trying to get that off the ground? Have we, um, have we pursued that? Because I know there's a lot of councils that are on board with it. We haven't pursued anything at this point. Right now, we're still trying to finish up the study that we commissioned uh, CD Camp Dresser McKee to do, yeah. and hopefully that should be wrapped up in relatively short order. And then those discussions can commence as to how we're going to take care of this backlog of work to be done in the city. As you but, know, my budget was zeroed out for stormwater two or three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we seem to continue to try to manage decay, you know, it's like a bad tooth, you know, if you don't do something with it, uh, eventually it near kills you. <laughs> um, so rather than manage decay, like if we took a, a, a quicker, I say, I know you, everybody's busy, a real active approach to trying to get this stormwater enterprise fund off the ground, because it really has to happen. I know it does. I, when I say manage decay, I mean since 2002, we continue to lose money. We haven't gotten any money, any excess, yeah. and, and I don't see any. And I think we have to really realize that the state and the federal government, over the next 20 years that I can see, is not going to do a damn thing for us. So I think the sooner that we try to get that stormwater enterprise fund off the ground, um, the better. So I don't know uh, just exactly how you want to go about it. I really don't have a clue. I wouldn't know how to charge for stormwater. I wouldn't know how to do it. Um, but that's not that's not in my expertise or pay grade. But um, somehow it has to happen. We, I know we've kicked it around. We've talked about it at the city council. You've mentioned it a couple of times. Um, yeah. Somewhere. So I, I just wanted to say that somewhere along the line we have to uh, we have to do something with that because there is absolutely no money to do it. It's sooner, I mean, we know this is going to cost millions of dollars, yep. millions and millions of dollars. Whether the study comes in, it's you know, a few million less than we expect, you know, a few million more than we expect. I mean, we know it's a huge amount, so I agree with Gene. I, I would say, I don't I don't know what this means, but we know it's going to move on it. We know it's going to, we know it's at least we can set it up and then throw the numbers in. At least we know how it'll move forward. I think there's a lot of support on the council yeah. for this. At least then, you know, as we wait for the report, at least we know, maybe you do already, exactly how this would be structured. And then when we know the structure and we get the money back, how much this is going to cost in the estimates, mm -hmm. we just plug in the figures. But we might want to start moving this along through all of the various channels it's going to have to go through. And I'm, uh, I have no doubt it's going to require a ban, a bond authorization. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, because even if you got it off, even if you got your stormwater enterprise fund off the ground today, it wouldn't be in time, uh, yeah. or you would not build up a reserve or enough money to do nearly anything. Because we all know, Mike knows, or in view, that stormwater utility is the most expensive thing there is to, to install. Reinforced concrete pipe and, and catch basins and manholes, hundreds of dollars a foot, several hundred dollars a foot. So, I'll leave that. I'll set my piece. <laughs> so, when are we expecting the report out from the stormwater consulting? Have a better idea, Jim? Um, I would say within a month, probably, to have everything okay, everything wrapped up on that. So, that's shall we put this as an agenda close. item on? Sure. Yes. Yeah, month? let's keep it on. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? I have one question. Do you know if these letters are similar to the ones that? Other communities along the Connecticut River have received in the past few years? Um, they are. Um, I think I can't speak. I can't speak to other communities. Um, Ned and I did get a debrief with the Corps on the contents of these letters in the fall, and I know that they were meeting with other communities around that time frame to present information to them about uh, about these inspections. The Corps received some stimulus funding money to hire um, third-party engineers to help them with 
sort of a stem to stern inspection of, of flood control systems in various communities in the Commonwealth. So the firm Watermark Engineering and, and GZA had this contract, and they did a very, I mean, this was the most detailed inspection we've ever got of the levees. So we have a, you know, we, we got two reports like that. Um, they're great, great documents, and um, it sounds like a lot of bad news here. And one thing I, d I did want to say was that the core did say that the city has taken very good care of the infrastructure that we have. I mean, we have a lot of really old stuff, but they said compared to a lot of other communities that um, that had inspections done, they said that we've really done a pretty good job in maintaining what we have. Although there's a lot of age issues, and then the uh, the issues of new standards from an engineering standpoint that I mentioned. I think that's an important question because if we're looking at a lot, I would imagine there are going to be a lot of communities who are looking at this, and probably not just near us, but probably throughout the country if they've had a stimulus money to look at this and raise the standard, and it could be that there starts to be some pushback on this. I mean, we're in bad shape, but we're in better shape than a lot of communities around it. How are they going to handle this? So this is we might want to examine what's going on politically as well, and are there groups forming, municipal groups forming, to give some pushback or some extension on this? This has hit other communities on the on the Connecticut River already, um, Chicopee, Springfield, uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Um, all three of those communities were going through a levy recertification process for the upgrade of the FEMA flood maps. <coughs> so a couple of years ago, I think each one of those communities had to spend millions of dollars in upgrades to their flood control facilities. We're not aware of any money being available whatsoever for this work, but obviously it's something that we're trying to keep our ear to the ground if there are any programs whatsoever or whatever. Yeah. Um, the core had stimulus money just to do the inspections, but um, we're not aware of any, any funding that's available. I mean, a lot of this is reverberations from, from Katrina. Yeah. You can imagine, I mean, it was a national reverberation after the hurricane. And um, what's happening is real tightening on looking at flood control, but no real solutions in terms of, you know, how do we pay for these things? Yeah, I wasn't thinking, I agree with Gene, I don't think there's going to be money. But there might be, you might hear that various communities are calling up their congresspeople, calling up senators, and joining the other side. What are we going to do? We can't do this. And it, it just, so you might want to just kind of see if you can hear if that's going on as well to join in and say, look, we can't do this right away, and we might need an extension on this. And can that happen? Could, I would guess there are probably even calls to all kinds of senators and congressmen about this. Can, can we get a copy of that? Sure. Just we might not know what the hell we're reading. <coughs> we have a, yeah, we have these. We also have um, the the reports themselves. We received on CD from the core. Uh -huh. You can actually post those up on our website if folks are interested right. in taking a look at them. Um, really interesting, I think. But of course, I'm yeah. an engineer, so yeah. 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 Yeah, that's my that's my lot in life, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I just want to acknowledge that last year when we were starting to talk about the stormwater management, that adding the flood piece into that evaluation that showed a lot of insight on the part of the department, so thank you. No I think we're ahead of the, yeah. the curve in terms of having that as part of the assessment. And our pump, new pump motors, are they uh, in? What new pump motors? Weren't we uh, for the... Uh, flood control? Yeah, flood control. There was $50,000 given through capital improvements last year to start the design of it. Yeah. Yep. And that was it. Okay. And after we saw what was coming when we actually met with the core back in, um, it was the day before uh, uh, Hurricane Irene came to town, it was the day That's before. Right. Uh, we were saying, well, we should figure out what we're going to do first before we spend $50,000 if we might have to rebuild the entire flood control facility. Yeah. So, so where are we sitting at with that now right now? We're just sitting on it right now. Just sitting on the 50000 yeah. And what were the cost of the, of the, the pump, the motors? Well, the pumps were fine, it was the motors. I think I had budgeted two and, a, two and a quarter each, and there's two left to be replaced. One of them uh, uh, somehow failed about 15 years ago, and it's replaced with a diesel engine, a cat engine. So we still have two of the original Sterling engines down there. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Move on to a landfill update. Landfill's closing. <laughs> <laughs> About a year. Yeah. yeah, are we doing laundry on what day exactly it's going to close? Are we close enough to do that? We don't have an exact day, but <laughs> we're, we're definitely into early 2013, unless something happens like do so magically appears at our doorsteps and start using the facility again and we utilize that capacity. 
but right now we're looking at early 2013. Um, Amoresco is getting ready to start up their facility after a long delay. So yep. they'll be generating some revenues off of that project again. And um, that's really about it. The board has set up a, a yeah, Board of Public Works has set up a, a subcommittee to, um, to, talk, to talk about the post land implementation of uh, solid waste management after the landfill closes. So we'll be meeting on, uh, tomorrow yeah, we'll be meeting tomorrow morning and, and uh, reviewing task force recommendations and some other things that came out of the, the task force from last year. And um, I was not I was not aware until our council meeting that we still had sniffers on board. Mm -hmm. And we do. Yes, we do. Okay. <clears throat> And we also still have a waiver <coughs> we do. for the landfill. Mm -hmm. And we have the closure is etched in stone. Is that that was a non binding vote? I'm asking I've had several people ask me this question. Nobody wants to even well, say Well no, what's the question? What's the question, what's the question the is if we have a we the vote was non binding to close the landfill. Is that correct? Which vote? The council? Yeah, we voted on that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that that? So it's it's a binding. Yeah. I mean, the vote went out to the general public. That was not that was a binding. A not a binding. Was not binding. That's the one I was asking. Yeah. That, that, was, that was my question. question. Okay. But then the council, the council made a vote, which, yeah. made, which is a binding obligation yes. to close the land. Absolutely. You and I voted the question. That's, okay. The question that I was getting was. I voted not. Yeah. <laughs> was whether or not it was a binding. Both was the general public. I said no, it was non-binding. So I was correct in saying that that was a non-binding vote. I mean, an ordinance can be passed to repeal what we passed. Yeah, yeah. As it now, it's, it's not. Yeah. So and you know where the questions are coming from. They're coming from out in the neighborhood. <coughs> so and, um, we have a site. In Turkey Hill Road. We have a site assignment on the parcel. Yep. Yeah. Which is still valid, even though we received the waiver. The site is site assigned, so it could become a facility in the future. Has to go through a lot of process to get there. To You've answered the question. Just <laughs> if anyone's interested, I asked Chris Mason if he could uh, organize a trip to the Greenfield um, facility that they have, their solar facility. If anybody, and we're going to be organizing that at some point this year. If anybody wants to go up and learn what they're doing up there, so just for the purpose of comparison. East Hampton's even closer. Yeah. East Hampton, too. Yeah. yeah. The one over here at the Smith School was great. Yes. Huge. To see it? I haven't seen that. So it's in the old tennis courts right here. Behind the so system. you come look at the one in my house. Just went, just went on two weeks ago. All right, this is the regular agenda. Anyone else? Are we done with landfill? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's been our practices, but at Board of Public Works, we usually just take a quick shoot around and see if anybody has another issue. Jesse? Paul? Um, I have another <coughs> issue for down the road. I don't know if it's good business, but just that. With the Clark School development going on, there's a dr some drainage concerns that I think you know about in that area. So at some point, I think it would be helpful to talk about those because they're going to come up in the public realm as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not I, I'm not sure how much is the city's ultimate problem, how much is the developers, but definitely there's been drainage issues there in the past and on Round Hill. And we'll make a hockey rink over there in the winter. It's warm enough. Gene, any issues? Nope, I'm all set. Mike? I'm all set. Yep. All set, thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I just have a follow-up question about um, private ways. So, Paul, you made some good recommendations at our last meeting. I did. <laughs> I read the minutes. <laughs> and I just wanted to make sure that we didn't lose those. I reviewed the minutes, for, or the, the agendas for the last 10 years for this committee, yeah. and private ways seems to be a recurring yeah. theme. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was just curious, I know there was some discussion about picking the low-hanging fruit and getting yeah. that off the tree. Um, we were trying to get this all resolved by fine. snow time next year. And I'm awaiting the new city solicitor to restart this conversation. Okay. Uh, Jim? I have, one, I have one other thing, actually, that reminded me. It was something that we talked about in one of the previous board meetings. We, we uh, When we were talking about the stone debris and all the brush and the chips and something, I think, might have been you, Paul, that was suggesting that we contact Coley Dickinson to see if there was some way we could get rid of yeah. some of the chips. We've been in touch with them, and 
They are interested in um, David Vulliter and, and our office Great. coordinating with them and some of the chipping activities, which are actually going to start this week. We're going to have a meeting and they're going to come down and see what we have and see if there's a way to uh, uh, work together to take care of a problem. So that was a good, good bit of advice. And the, my second piece of follow-up that we talked about FEMA reimbursement for the storm. Did we get that? No, not yet. Okay. But it's still more? We are. We had our, actually our kickoff meeting about a week and a half ago, and with it, the 60-day clock is ticking now, and we have to do our submittals of all our project worksheets. So I doubt that we'll see a reimbursement before the end of the fiscal year, but we'll see some kind of reimbursement. That includes the shelter costs, DPW costs, snow plowing costs, grinding costs, things of that nature. Are you pretty confident we'll get most of those covered? Well, they threw out a curveball out there where we have federal aid highway roads in, in Northampton, and those don't qualify. How many, what, what roads don't qualify? Federal aid highway roads. They don't qualify. They don't qualify. So what we so work, logic. <laughs> so we worked out uh, what we think is going to be a reasonable resolution is we're going to take all the lane miles in Northampton, calculate which ones are federal aid roadways, which ones aren't, and come up with a percentage for all our uh, tree activities will be a percentage of those roadways. So that seemed to be something that FEMA said they could live with because we can't track whether we're there and then we're chopping over here, but we're all over the city. And we're still taking down hangars out there. Yeah. So the promises like Deval Patrick for fire and Obama for Medicaid and now the FEMA for the brush will all all for not. <laughs> okay, and the one last issue I want to raise is how many members is that? Let me adjourn. Well, oh, oh, <laughs> 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 Get me out of here. <laughs> when, when we're, by ordinance, we have a quarterly meeting. We've been historically scheduling a monthly meeting. I'd like to suggest that we continue to do that and cancel it as need be, but have a standing agenda. I would agree with that. And this time we're I'm sorry, what do you mean? Do you want to keep it a quarterly or monthly no, schedule? No, keep it a monthly keep schedule. Monthly. Okay. And then uh, I, I would cancel it. Yeah. Do you have a question from the audience? Yeah, a quick public comment. Would it be possible to hold these meetings at 5 p.m. or later? Is uh, that an option? I, I got an ordinance at 6. Yeah. And do, the problem is it runs into the eve, off of the evening meetings. Mm. Um, I could do it every once in a while, but you have ordinance the same day, same time. Yeah. I could do it every... Mm -hmm. It would actually be better for me to do it later a few times, but I think we run into some problems with that. Yeah, because if it was at 5, I would have been 55 minutes early today. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. One second. One second. Because oh. just wondering if we could move the trial with yeah. If that would help. It makes it a little later, people might be able to. Probably work. helps a little. It's, it's for people who work. Nine to five, they can plausibly get here around five, but four, there's no chance. So. I, I, I mean, yeah. is it realistic to think that? I mean, we've had some people come, but yeah. do we, do, is it realistic to think that a small time change will bring more public in? I mean, if so, I'd be all for it. I, I'm not sure. If it will help well, the Odgers for sure, <laughs> at a minimum. And I would suggest that this, this committee is a joint committee, and that <laughs> people go to Board of Public Works or they go to a City Council first, and we, you know, if they're not resolved there, then I guess I. I haven't seen many public people here. So and we could also, if, if, some, if we had some, a time when people were wanting to come to the meeting, we're a small enough group, we could then change that individual meeting. I think it's all about who Adam can get to videotape the meeting. So yeah. Like the pool gets wider for 5 p.m. or later. 9 to 5 stuff really restricts eligible. Even, even college students, high school students, it's tough for them to get here before 5 p.m. But there are also a lot of other meetings later, too. Just yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> All right, now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. We can do that one. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Thank you for your time, everyone. Oh, boy. Thank you.